As I mentioned in the previous video, as you start studying about electric fields, your book may very well dedicate an entire chapter just to electric field superposition. And this, again, this word superposition refers to electric fields adding together. So the issue is if you have more than one charge in a particular region, what is the total contribution they make to some point in space around those charges? So here's another superposition case. What I have here is a positive charge here, distance s over 2 from the, from the x-axis, and a negative charge here, distance s over 2 from the x-axis. Nice and symmetrical. There's a distance s total between them. And I have a point over here, which is on the x-axis, a distance x from the origin over here. So this point right here. I'd like to know what the electric field is at this point right here. That's my superposition case. And if I look at it, why is it superposition? It's because there's two charges around. There's a plus sign, a plus charge here and a negative charge down here. Both of them fill the entire universe around them with electric field lines. Some of those lines will go through this point. I'd like to know what the electric field is. So what I'll do then is say, okay, well, what we know about this system is we're going to treat each charge separately as if the other one doesn't exist. So what we'll have here is this, this positive charge. We'll have electric field lines going all directions around, all the little arrows coming out. I'm purposely drawing them kind of short here, so I won't make my picture too messy, but these lines spread in all directions throughout the whole universe, including one that just happens to go exactly through our point of question right here, and we'll call that E positive. That's your electric field due to the positive charge. The same thing for the negative right here. We can draw all those in there like this. These are all these little electric field lines again. Keeping them short to keep my drawing neat, but there's a whole bunch of electric field lines that are pointing inwards because negatives are sinks of electric field. All these lines go in, but they fill the entire space around the charge. And once again, one of them goes right through this point, pointing this way. So there you go. This is sort of the setup for you, and hopefully you can see the superposition. At my point of interest right here, there's an electric field due to the positive charge pointing down to the right, and an electric field due to the negative charge pointing down and to the left. Our job is to find the superposition. What is the total electric field at that point? So I have to do a vector addition of those two of those two vectors, E plus and E minus. You shouldn't be too afraid of doing vector additions because hopefully you did it in a mechanics class. The problem now is really no different than one where maybe you have a box like this and you have a kid pulling on it this way with a tension T1 and another kid pulling down that way with a tension T2 like that. What is the net force on that box? Same type of problem. So what we'll do is we'll get in there and see if we can identify some vector components. And just add these things up. So what we'll do then is say, okay, due to E plus right here, I have a couple components. I have a downwards component there and an over component. I'll call this E plus X and I'll call this side right here E plus Y. There's an X and Y component for the E plus I'll have the same thing over here, a downwards one and one over like that. I'll call this side right here E minus X, and this side right here will be E minus Y, X and Y components. And so I know the reason why I'm doing that now is because I know that the total X electric field will be E plus X plus E minus X, add those X components. I know the total Y electric field will be E plus Y, plus E minus Y, add those two components as well. So if I look at the figure here, there's a bit of symmetry we can exploit. In particular, it looks like these two X components are just going to cancel away. In other words, it looks like the total electric field has this rightwards one because of the positive charge and a leftward component along the X axis because of the negative charge, and they're equal and opposite. So I can just conclude without really doing anything that my total X electric field for this case is going to be zero. So we already have a bit of insight here in how this behaves. In particular, I'll just draw it over here. If you have a positive charge here and a negative charge here, and you're interested in electric field as a point on the bisector of the two charges like this, I don't know what the magnitude is going to be, but because there is no X component, and it looks like in this case the net Y component is going to be down, there's just going to be a singular electric field down like that, and that's going to be the total electric field, and that's actually a correct result. Two charges separated by a distance, the electric field on a perpendicular bisector is all vertical, in this case points down. Let's just see what that downwards one is going to be here. We have to find out what E plus Y and E plus X are going to be. And if I look at it very carefully now, I need to sort of do a bit of trigonometry on this here. In particular, I need to find an angle in here. Okay, the angle is a bit hard to find, but I think we can do it here. Uh, let me get sort of a different color here. Maybe I'll use this black here. I'll say that maybe this angle in here is angle alpha. And if that's alpha in there, then this angle over here going to be alpha also, and if this is alpha, then that's going to be alpha. So I have these two alphas in here going like that, and so what I can write in this case here, that you just use a bit of trig on the right triangles in there, that E plus Y, in other words, this component right here, looks like it's the opposite side over there, so the sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, looks like it's going to be E plus times the sine of alpha. 
And additionally, because it's pointing down, I'll put a minus sign in front of it. And it looks like I can find E minus Y also, because here's alpha over here. E minus Y also involves this opposite angle over here. It looks like the sine of this alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, and it also points down. It looks like it's going to be minus E negative times the sine of alpha. So now what I can do is just a bit of uh, bit bringing everything together here. My EY then is going to be, looks like, minus E plus times the sine of alpha minus E minus times the sine of alpha. So I think now at this point here we're ready to find out what E plus and E minus are. So just what is the magnitude of this electric field and this one right here? Well, what we're going to do is just drop back on our good old formula for electric field, which is K times Q over R squared. For the positive charge here, I'll just have the K right there, as we always will. And the amount of charge in the positive charge is just Q plus. I don't quite know what it is, but maybe you have a specific problem in mind. And we divide that by the distance squared between them. Now, I don't really know what this is on the onset, but we can get the triangle out and look. Here's the distance right here, R, between the positive charge and my point of interest. And it is the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. So if I look at it carefully, this might get a little messy, but it looks like to me R is going to be the square root of s over 2 squared plus x squared. Because this leg here is s over 2 high, and the distance I am from the point is x, so just using Pythagorean theorem, looks like I have, I guess we'll just call it r plus. It's the distance from the positive charge to the point of interest. So right down here, it's going to be squared over here. I can go ahead and fill that in right here. I'll actually get s over 2 squared plus x squared. That's my e positive. And if I look very carefully, it looks like my R negative is going to be the same way. Like when I want to find E negative here to find out what contribution or how strong the electric field is due to the negative charge, it's going to also be equal to K times Q negative over, now how far is the negative charge from the point of interest? Well, it looks like it's also an S over 2 squared plus X squared. So we have the same sort of quantity, same denominator going in there. So what we can do now is it looks like we have very similar quantities here, other than the Q plus and the Q minus, it looks like everything is the same. I'm going to sort of maybe wrap the video up to say that what you can do now is take the positive and negative here. You can plug this positive in for there, this negative in for there, and you might have to do some simplification. I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but I'm just trying to give you the general ideas right here. And then lastly, so you can have you can plug in and take this another step right here. I'll just like dot 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 a few more steps in here. You can start working algebraically on what your EY is equal to. And there's one last thing that you might might consider in here is that um, the sine of alpha right here looks like it exists in common between both terms here, and you can actually sort of reduce that in terms of something else also, because if you look back over here, alpha is this alpha sitting in this big triangle right here, and it looks like it's equal to something like S over 2 opposite over hypotenuse. I'll just sort of write that in the margin right here. It might be helpful it because to get rid of the sine of alpha, because it looks like it's equal to S over 2 over that ugly square root right there. So opposite over hypotenuse, S over 2 looks like it's sine of alpha is S over 2 over the square root of S over 2 squared plus X squared, something like that. So this is a relation for sine of alpha here. So I'm just giving you a bunch of stuff. If you plug the E plus and the E minus in for what you have here, and the sine of alpha in for the sine of alpha there and there, you get a really big expression. Depending on what you're doing, maybe you have some numbers to plug in, or maybe you're going to do a simplification or something, you should all, be bring, all bring it together in terms of a coherent answer. So let me just recap with what we've seen here, electric field superposition. This is a result. Maybe you should just file away in the back of your head in case you're ever asked about it. But if you have a Cartesian coordinate system like this, and on the, Cart the Cart coordinate system, you have a positive charge up there, a negative charge up there, what we've learned in this example is that at a point on a perpendicular bisector, there will be an electric field that points net downwards like this. This would be, say, the E total, and the E total then would come from the big expression that you're simplifying. And again, I don't know what level you need to simplify that, but that's what you'll get. This is an important sort of conceptual result to remember that the electric field will be straight down like that, and off you'd go. So before I wrap up the video then, you'll have to work on your algebra on that one there. Let's just look at what might happen to the problem if we have a similar system like that. But instead of, here's our Cartesian coordinate system again. But instead of two positive, a negative and a positive, let's say there's a positive here and another positive right here. What would we get? I'm not going to work through the whole thing. We'll just look at the general features. But here's that point again, a distance x from the axis. Let's see if we can figure out what, where the general electric field might point. So because of this positive charge, there'll be an electric field line going down this way like that. 
we'll call that E positive or something like that. And because of this charge over here, the electric field going, line going through the point, we'll call it E positive also. Maybe we'll call this charge 1 and this charge 2, so this will be E positive 1 right here and E positive 2 down here, something like that, so we know where the fields are coming from. So if we look at it now, it is a bit different from the problem we just worked. In particular, it looks like if I look at the components, this one has a component up and over, this one has a component over and down, doesn't it? So if you look very carefully at this, it looks like this component and this one are going to cancel in the supervision case, but we get a double reinforcement due to these two components right there. So looking at this problem, it looks like to me, if you have a positive charge here and a positive charge here, and you're on the perpendicular bisector right here, it looks like there's going to be a net electric field over that way. So in other words, the total electric field is going to point that way. Just very different from the last problem that we looked at. And I think you can probably see what's going to happen. Here's the final result here. Two positives right here. The total electric field is going to point over to the right for a case like that. And I think what you can see what happened here if these two positive charges in this example here were replaced with a negative charge there and a negative charge there. Both these electric fields are going to point this way and this way like that. We'll still get a cancellation of the Y components, but you'll get a net electric field pointing in the leftward direction there. So over here, you can see we have a negative here and a negative here. And if on the perpendicular bisector, once again, it looks like I'll get an electric field sort of pointing over to the left like that. So this is so hopefully this video sort of convinced you of the issues that are involved in electric field superposition. All I've done was take two charges, separated by some dis by distance, nice and symmetrical on axis like that. I played around with the signs and stuff, but we saw three different cases happen. We saw a net electric field pointing down, a net electric field pointing right, and a net electric field pointing left, depending on what the configuration of the charge were. But that's the name of the game for electric field superposition now. What does happen when multiple charges each contribute their electric field to a given point? As you can see, a lot of different varieties in there.